But when, when actually acted upon, uh, like on other people, to bring things together, I think that that is the motivation for what the extension of our emotions is. Negative emotions, conversely, yeah. are things which will break things up and increase entropy. Um, so I think that the concept of what, what thought does in terms of the way we're appreciating it as it's translated through a biological system, I don't think one can really get at, that, get at it from looking at the handle of the biological system. One has to work out where that thought process, process is and what its true function is. Yes, and then that really, uh, I think, sums it up in a way. Yes, there is this, you know, Jesus said, think with the heart, Jesus. It's an amazing statement, this. Think with the heart, Judas. Mm -hmm. And if Judas thought with the heart, so to speak, I think it was a metaphor, but I may well have some mechanism, you know, that actually is derived out of brain and the heart. Whatever mm -hmm. the physicality of it is, and I, I've read these instances where people have heart transplants and actually inherit the qualities of the individual whose heart was taken for the transplant, if you see what I'm yeah, trying to say. And I, yeah, I, I, do, I do know where you're coming from, Lance. And, and really, yes, within the verity of the living system, remember, blood is magnetic. It's iron. It's ferromagnetic. It's a circuit, you know. Our mm. living system is the movement of blood in a coil in our bodies which produces electric charges. We have a biomagnetic field, really, basically, by the circulation process of our blood in the body. The heart pumps this around, both the brain and everywhere. So we have, if you like, a kind of biological transducer. You know, rather like a tape recorder transduces sound and transfers that to the speakers which move air and blast this you know, recording on the um, kind of um, ferrous oxide of the tape, if you see what I mean. Mm. I believe that the magnetic component, you know, which is hemoglobin, you know, it is, it's, it's, it's blood, it's ferrous, you know, that somehow this thing can retain, if you like, a kind of static electric picture in that format. And really, I'm out of my expertise here, there may be much cleverer people in this particular field who might be able to make a more, more cogent statement about this. I'm only trying to, to talk about what, what you're saying, really, and maybe I, I for one, because I think outside the box, will be open-minded enough to welcome any kind of theories of how this might be true. And I'm willing to, to actually accept that, you know, in, in, in as much as the heart contains the largest volume of blood per unit area at any given time within our body, that that's where we retain the greatest impressions in terms of a format of, of recordability, so to speak, of our impressions or whatever, and you take that up, and there is a then fixed thing, you put it in somebody else, a fixed picture, so to speak, you put it in somebody else, and that pic, then when you start that heart up, in a blood system of somebody else, that recording actually plays itself, and the propensities and the magnitudes that are registered there might then make a person, uh, you know, feel and see the kinds of things that the previous owner of that heart had, if you see what I'm trying to say. Yes, yes, yes that's, I that's think that's a very plausible thing, and I do, I do go with you on that. But I, I don't know, I haven't done any research into this, but I would say that I would, I'd hold hands with you there, really. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, um, wonderful. Now, uh, you know, the, ha this idea that uh, John brought about caring and all of that, Jesus was trying to say, he always spoke in metaphors, in, in parables that were beautiful metaphors that meant so many things in, in simple sentences, if you see what I'm trying to say. Yes, he was yes. so e economic with his words, this wonderful yes. master of explanation, so to speak. And the heart is the center, if you like, of our, our body space, if you, you know, if you call it that. And what he, I think he was trying to say is that every single human being in the center of the meaning of that human being is something extraordinarily special and that no one needs to feel they are nothing. 
And I believe most of all, because they can have an eternal propensity, if but they can understand that adding rather than separating and dividing is the clue, is the great tip, is the great hint given by the great teachers. Yes. You know, and I think abductees, incidentally, and you know, when I look at the research into this, I've got to the, uh, to the come to the conclusion that up, if, if you are an abductee, I would say to them myself, don't despair. I believe abductees are amongst those whom these greys, if they're experimenting on our species, right, are having problems introducing their programs into, so to speak. They have certain successful intercepted biological lines, and those they do not need to pay too much attention to, right? However, with abductees, they've got a problem for some reason. So they're the lucky ones. And they're looking at abductees in this particular way, trying to find out why they can't get whatever they want to do to our human species into abductees or types like that. Interception well, is thus, you know, not the same well, as that's abduction. A, that's the good resist, news. Yeah. And, and resist um, interception. Sorry. We're we're out of time. We're uh, we had so much uh, conversation oh, yeah. that we're running out of time. Yeah. Uh, and I wanted to make sure that you mentioned where people can find out more about your work and uh, find your books and so on and so forth. Not that important, but I mean it's nigelkerner.com and all the information is there. I really have to say this to you. I'm not one of these individuals who go on shows to kind of hype my book up. There's so much to say in shows like yours to make human beings believe that there's something wonderful going on too. That it's not doom and gloom. That in fact, if we believe the, the things that the great teachers said to us, then whatever threat there might be, because we are human and we can say no, that's powerful enough. Absolutely. Might, might well, I do. I want to thank I uh, thank you for being on the show tonight. We'll have to have you back to talk some more, obviously, because we we just barely I'd scratched the surface. And thank same you for being such a gracious host. And it was it was wonderful talking with both of you, and uh, I wish you continued luck in your research and your third book, and we'll talk again. And Thank God you, Paul. If want to talk say. more on the uh, uh, biological side, we can do that in the future. Wonderful. Well, thank you both, gentlemen. It was a, it was a great hour, so we'll talk again. Yeah. Thanks very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you All very right. much. All right. Good night, everybody.